Hey guys, today I'm going to change the rear rotors and the rear brake pads on a 2003 Honda Accord. This model is the EX, it's the V6 model. First step, you're going to want to get these two screws removed. I use an impact screwdriver because using a regular screwdriver can be a little difficult because these will have a little bit of rust on them sometimes which make them really difficult to remove. This impact screwdriver as you hit it, it spins to the left. Let me show you how that works. Make sure you have it set to your, your loosen setting. You can see just one hit, and it got that one loose. Let's get the other one. One solid hit. Next, let down your parking brake. You're gonna need to let that down because since I'm changing the rotor, I need to get the caliper completely off of the rotor. If you were just doing the pads alone, you could uh, use a 14 mil uh, 17 millimeter wrench on the nut and then a 12 millimeter socket on the head and take this off and you'll be able to slide it out, put your brake pads in and put it back together. But I'm changing the rotor so we need to remove that. But I am going to loosen up both of these because we need to spin the piston back in. So we're gonna, next to this step, remove both these 12 millimeter bolts that are on the caliper. After you have both of those removed, you should have a lot more access to the caliper, but you will not have enough room to pull it away from the rotor yet because of the e-brake cable line and the brake line itself. There's a 12 millimeter bolt you need to remove right here. Then there's another 12 millimeter bolt right here which remove, removes the brake line from the bracket. Get those removed and you will be able to pull this out completely. Now that I have both bolts removed, you can see it gives me a lot more room. And pull that off. You can slide it completely out. The reason we need to do this, we are going to spin the piston back in to accommodate the thicker, the newer thicker pads and the rotor. Um, it's not similar to the front. The front you could use a little uh, compression tool which pushes it back in but the back you have to spin it uh, clockwise to uh, pull it back into the, the caliper itself. Before you do that um, you're going to want to go ahead and go to the master cylinder and remove the cover. I had already removed this one. The reason we're doing that is when you're spinning the little cylinder back in on the caliper, it pushes brake fluid back into the master cylinder. You don't want to, to be sealed off, otherwise it can create a little bit of pressure on the master cylinder itself, potentially damaging it. So just remove the cap and you can just let it sit on it. I even have the hood closed so no dust or debris gets in here. What I like to use, I don't know if there's a special tool, I usually just use this Phillips head screwdriver. It has a perfect uh, size sh uh, shaft on it. So when I'm spinning this back in, it seems to, to work perfect. And once you get it started, it's really easy to spin. I'm hoping I have a good angle on the camera. should be good more than good enough when you spin it in you want to have it aligned perfectly up and down right there so when you look at it from this angle it needs to be like that the reason for that 
on you notice these little I guess they're little uh, nubs on here these fit perfectly into spot on especially uh well not the outside one but just the inside one it slides right into spot and allows it to sit flush uh, against the the piston itself so make sure you have that exactly like that now that you have your your caliper set up we need to get off the rest of the the rest of the caliper this little bracket so it's easy to get to well, let me back up there's two 14 millimeter bolts right here once you remove those um, you can go ahead and pull off the rotor and we're going to get these 14s moved. Once those two are removed, you can just slide this little bracket right off. Remove the pads. You can see this is where it was making the noise. This pad was just gone. It was all the way down to the little... This thing is on here. Basically when the pad gets low enough, this starts scraping against the rotor and that's what creates the noise that you know the brakes need to be replaced. We bought this car 10 months ago and I don't know when the brakes were last serviced. Obviously it had been a while on the rear brakes. I'm gonna double check the front next week, maybe do a brake replacement on those as well. But that's the main reason this car was making all that noise. But getting the rotor off, you can see it's stuck on there a little bit from the rust. Just take a hammer, just like that. Loosen it up, looks like it's getting stuck on there. There you go. Rotor's completely off. And put it back together, pretty easy. Start with your rotor first. Let's get the new one on here. Get your rotor on. And then put on, put back on the two screws. Now I use this to the set it, setting to tighten it. Of course, just hand spin, bend back on. I'll take the hammer now. The piece keeps popping out. Just to tighten them up a little bit. Very nice and snug. Next, rebolt that bracket. Bolt back in those two 14 millimeters, 14 millimeter bolts, and then go ahead and place your new uh, brake pads into spot. Because after that, you just want to grab the caliper. Since we fix the alignment of that, it'll slide right over that uh, the little nipple. And there you go. It's on there. Need to put these two 12 millimeter bolts back in. That one first. Let's do the second one. And tighten these up as much as you can. Oh, duh. Now, see, this is spinning where you may need your 17. There you go. Hold that into place. And let's work on the top. This one's not spinning, so I'm able to tighten it by itself without using the wrench. But now it's spinning as I get to the end. Put your wrench back on there. Tighten that up. That's pretty much it, you're good to go. Last two steps, really easy. Bolt back up your brake line and your e-brake cable and you're done. Um, there's different ways of breaking these in. Uh, I've read different ways. 
I usually follow the same one whenever I put new pads and rotors on. It's speeding up to 40 miles an hour and then applying 80% brake pressure and then slowing down all the way to five miles an hour. I do that five times in a row and then I go for a drive of about five to 10 minutes without using much brakes, preferably a freeway, just to cool everything back down. That way the pads can uh, get broken in and everything sits a little better and it just extends the life of those. That has seemed to work for me and I've done uh, many, many different brake jobs. And I've followed that one ever since that's the first one that I learned. But if you have a different method, by all means, or whatever works best for you is great in terms of breaking them in. This one always seems uh, to work great for me. I'll leave a little uh, detailed description of my break-in in the, the, the notes section below the video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you need any help, let me know.